When we're experiencing a growing real estate market, everything is wonderful, right? Well, I will tell you one thing. When we're experiencing a growing real estate market, the number one problem that we have is appraisals coming in low. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you what happens when an appraisal comes in low and what you can do about it, but then also my top five tips on how to ensure that appraisal is as good as it can get. Stay tuned. Appraisals. Nothing is worse when the appraisal comes in low. And one of the biggest problems with the appraisal coming in low is typically the timing that it arrives. You see, the appraisal is typically not done until towards the end of the process. So the buyer and the seller already have movers scheduled. They have already sold things out of their home. They've already had a contract on their next place and things are already moving along. And then this wrench gets thrown into everything. And it really is a problem, but it is something that we would need to work through. You see, buyers and sellers have the same goal. We want to get the home to closing. The buyers are already invested in the home. They've probably already done all of their inspections. They've probably already made plans. They may have even registered kids for school, found a new church, all that kind of stuff. And of course, sellers are invested as well because this is money out of their pocket if the appraisal doesn't come in. So keeping in mind that the buyers and sellers probably still want to move forward with this sale is a very, very good thing. So now when an appraisal comes in low, our contract here in Northern Virginia allows three options. The first option is the buyer can simply just void the contract. And that is typically done in two instances. One, when that appraisal comes in extremely low and there is just no way that the buyer can move forward um, and the value is just not there. And the second reason is that the appraisal comes in low, but the buyer just doesn't have any cash to make up the difference. Maybe they're using all of their cash on the down payment and their closing costs, but if they don't have enough cash to make up the difference or if it's so significant, they just can't do it, they can void the contract. And that is a contingency that the buyer does have. The second option is for the seller to lower the sales price to the appraised value. So there's no negotiation here. The seller just agrees that they will sell the house to the buyer at that adjusted price. And the third option is the buyer and the seller renegotiate some of the pricing terms of the contract. So they may renegotiate the sales price. They also may renegotiate the closing cost credit given to the buyer. They may need to renegotiate a couple things here and there uh, in order to make it work. What we're looking for in this negotiation is a win-win. We do not want the seller to feel like they've lost. We do not want the buyer to feel like they've won. And if we are getting into a situation where the buyer wants to win and the seller is gonna lose, then maybe the best option is something else. But we wanna create a win-win situation that is doable for everybody. And one thing to keep in mind is some appraisals for some specific loan programs that are often used in our area, maybe a quarter of the time, those appraisals actually stick with the property for six months. So if a future buyer were to come in, they wouldn't be able to use that particular loan program to purchase the home because that appraised value sticks with the property for six months. So talk to your real estate agent about that and if that is indeed the case with the appraisal that came in on your property because that will have an impact on how you negotiate through this. Now those are the three options that you can work with on the regional sales contract with your buyer. The buyer also has the option of filing a rebuttal or a review of the appraisal. And I've done this on several occasions in many different loan programs. I have filed a rebuttal on a VA loan appraisal, we've done conventional loans, and we've done an FHA loan. And I've won some and I've lost some. But you can't get a review or anything to be changed on the appraisal unless you file it. So if the buyer is willing to do this, that probably is the first step to take. And then after the review is done and if the appraiser decides that they're sticking with their numbers, then we move on to those three options. 
So how do we avoid getting into this situation in the first place? Well, sometimes you can't avoid having it, but I have some five best practices that will help you and your agent ensure that the appraised value is as realistic as possible and you're not caught by surprise in the future. The number one thing is you want to find out where this appraiser is coming from. One of the interesting things in our area, we are in Northern Virginia, um, but we are about 60 miles outside of Washington, DC. And I will tell you from time to time, appraisers will call to do an appraisal on a property and to set the appointment. And when I ask where they're coming from, they're not even coming from anywhere in Virginia. They might be coming from DC. They might be coming from Maryland. I've even had an appraiser come up from North Carolina. So making sure the appraiser actually knows the area that the property is in is really important. The buyer has the opportunity to decline the use of the assigned appraiser and request a different appraiser, but only before that appraisal appointment happens. So if the listing agent gets a phone call and the appraiser is coming down from Maryland and that listing agent does not have confidence that that appraiser is going to know the area, that listing agent needs to talk to the buyer agent as soon as possible because the only way you can get a different appraiser into the property is if the buyer requests it. Now, the buyer's lender may not allow that to happen. The buyer's lender may say, nope, this is the appraisal management company we're using and this is the person who's assigned and we're sticking to it. But again, you can't get anything unless you ask for it. But the number one thing is if you have a local appraiser, and we have a lot of them around here. If you have a local appraiser, you're better off than having someone come from a different part of the area. Where we live, I'll tell you this, and this is kind of funny, but kind of true. Because we are a little bit more rural than the Northern Virginia area, sometimes people think we go out and we have to milk our cows every morning and we may not have running water. So that perception can affect value, especially if the agent, or excuse me, especially if the appraiser does not know the local market. Number four, please make it easy for the appraiser to come to your house. And I know one of the challenges is when this happens, you have stuff in moving boxes, your linen closet is a disaster, you have stuff all over the place, and it's not going to be the most convenient to let the appraiser in. But the better you can have your house presented and the more convenient you can make it to the appraiser, the better. These appraisers are doing several of these every single day. And when they say they need to be there between 10 and 11, they really need to be there between 10 and 11 because they've outlined their entire day around starting at your house at 10 o'clock. The other thing is with the appraiser, it is okay for you to be home as a seller, uh, but I wouldn't over uh, touch uh, the appraiser, making sure they see all these little things. After all, appraisers are human, and if you over egotize the whole thing, that's gonna affect how they rate certain things. Because in the end, this is an opinion of value. So their opinions are going to be altered by how they are treated inside your home. So treat them professionally, make sure they have their own space, ask if they need anything, but please make it easy for them to show. Another thing with appraisers, and there are a few in our local area, some appraisers will not go inside a house where there are dogs, period. It could be a teacup chihuahua. They are not going in the house. So those appraisers typically will share that with your listing agent or with you, whoever they talk to, to schedule the appointment, and you truly need to honor it. It is not a joke. These people are truly afraid, and if the dog comes running at them when they arrive at the home, that might be it for the appraisal. So make sure you remove your animals if the appraiser requests it and you do it before they get there. Number three, if you have a newer home, if your home is two years old or less, part of the relevant sales compared to your home are other new construction sales. And many times those new construction sales are not recorded in the multiple listing system. So an appraiser typically relies on the multiple listing system for all their information. And if those sales are not in the MLS, the appraiser is not gonna have access to those. So have your listing agent reach out to the sales agent of the builder in your neighborhood and have them give them a rundown of similar style homes that have recently sold and the sales prices associated with them. So you can provide that to the appraiser. If anything, it's going to help, it's not gonna hurt.
My second top tip is to make sure your listing agent has a list of all of the improvements that you have done to the home since you purchased it. And it would be important for you to have costs associated with it. So if you finished your basement, added a deck, changed out flooring, put on a new roof, new HVAC system, irrigation system, things like that, having that information for the appraiser is very important. The appraiser relies on information in the multiple listing system and the multiple listing system is limited to a lot of the information you can put in. There really is no place to put in the age of your HVAC or the age of your roof unless the agent takes up valuable remarks space uh, to advertise those things. So it's important for you to have a list of all of those things for the appraiser. Now you may not get your dollar for dollar back on the value, but showing the appraisal that you've done some improvements may make a huge difference as they're looking at relevant sales. And the number one tip is when you are sitting down to establish your listing price at the very beginning, make sure it is a very market relevant listing price. And market relevance is based on sold properties only. Sold properties only. You cannot base your listing price solely on what the other competitive homes are listed at. Your listing price and your sales price need to be based on most recent sales and trends in the market. The only thing an appraiser can use to validate the value of your home are homes that have sold most recently. You can't go back five years, you can't go back two years, you can't go back a year. And what your neighbor told you their household for hmm, didn't really sell for that much. Pure facts, recently sold, and just make sure that listing price is good right from the very beginning. One of the challenges we run into in a growing market is multiple offers on homes, especially in lower price ranges, which may drive the sales price higher. You still have to be very careful about the sales price you accept because if that appraisal comes in low, you might be stuck. So make sure your listing price is right on spot with marketing, with the market value, and also make sure the sales contract price is right on tab with market value as well. If you're interested in finding out your home's value, that is something I can help you with. I am not a licensed appraiser, but I am very familiar with the market having done this full time for 16 years. So I can dive into the multiple listing system and help you determine what the best, most relevant market value is of your home. But if you do need an appraiser for a very specific need, you're refinancing, you're doing a relocation move, you're getting a divorce, you, someone has passed away and you need a value on their home. If you do need a referral to an appraiser, please reach out to me. I love to share my appraisers all the time. Um, as a matter of fact, one of my appraisers has been a client of mine before. So I really um, wanna make sure my folks are taken care of. So if you need a local appraiser in the Fredericksburg, Stafford, Spotsylvania, King George area, reach out to me and I would love to share their information with you. If you wanna find out more about the great services we provide our sellers and buyers here in the Fredericksburg, Virginia area, click the link in the description below, visit our website, fill out a buyer or a seller profile, and we will be in touch and help you out right away. Hope you have a great week. See you soon. Don't forget to click the subscribe button right here to keep all this great information coming to you. And if you want to know more about the services we provide here in the great Commonwealth of Virginia, click the link to our website, go fill out a seller or a buyer profile, and we will get in touch and help you out as soon as we can. Have a great time. Don't forget, subscribe.